Hello students, Wendy Ansley here, kinesiology professor at College of the Desert. I look forward to sharing with you a well-rounded sequence that's really going to touch on balance. The emphasis on balance and some things I love about our balancing postures is that they awaken every muscle group in our body and we're truly connected from our pinky toe to the crown of the head as well as we're grounded into the ground so there's an amazing aspect of self-awareness and self-discovery within so i just wanted to welcome you today i'm going to send hero and we're going to get started at the tops of our mat with several quarter sun salutations so we're going to root into the ground we're going to awake the arches lift those arches spread those toes again that is called padabanda awakening the intrinsic foot muscles inhale we're going to draw those arms up energy out the fingertips exhale we're going to swan dive down we're going to come into a dynamic forward fold where we heel and toe heel and toe Beautiful. Inhale, halfway lift. Many of you hands to the shins, the thighs, to the ground, tailbone out and back. Exhale, come into a forward fold. Come a little bit lower if you can. Gently bend the knees. Inhale and rise. Open the chest, open the heart. Exhale, heart centered. Inhale, root into the ground, draw those arms up. Exhale, swan dive down into another dynamic forward fold, heel and toe. If you need to use the blocks, you can use the blocks. Beautiful. Inhale, halfway lift, tailbone out and back, gaze forward and down, either hands by the shins or the thighs or the ground. Exhale, come into forward fold, trying to bring your sternum and chest a little bit closer to the shins, but come more to the midfoot. Gently bend the knees, inhale, swan dive up, open the chest, open the heart, exhale, heart centered. Let's do a cleansing breath together. We're gonna inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, cleansing breath, inhale, exhale. Again, cleansing breath. Inhale. Exhale. Rooting into the ground. We're going to inhale. Draw those arms up. Let's clasp around the left wrist with the right hand and shift over to the right. Opening that left side body. Lateral flexion. Tuck the chin in just slightly and think about drawing that right hip forward. Inhale, rise. Clasping around the right wrist, thumb and index together. Come over to the left. Tuck the chin in just slightly. Draw that right hip forward. Inhale, rise. Exhale, swan dive down. Come into forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Framing the feet, we're going to step that right leg back as we come into our classical Surya Namaskara. This is Anjanyasana. Lower the right knee to the ground. We'll do one or two dynamics. Let's keep that left hand on the hip and draw that right arm up. Some of you can go a little bit lower to the ground or to the block. And as you kind of rotate that pinky, and I want you to breathe into that release of the right hip, the beautiful psoas muscles, which, which mostly attaches in the front of the pelvis, also attaches a little bit in the back. Breathe into that release of the beautiful psoas, the major hip flexor muscles. And now the right hand on the hip, we're going to draw that left arm up. We're either gonna, we're gonna either take the hand to the block or to the ground, or we're gonna come into a little release. And now we're kind of releasing the left side, the IT band, the outer left hip. Beautiful, gently frame the foot. 
back leg is straight, connect to runner's pose. So quadricep comes to that thigh bone of the back leg. Hands placed to the ground. Lift that, inhale, lift that left leg up into a one-legged down dog and rotate that pinky toe inward a bit. Lower the left leg and come into Phalakasana. Belly button to the spine, active legs, active shoulders, broaden those shoulders. Dome the upper back just a bit. Core awakening, an element of balance. Gently lower to the knees. Let's do knees, chest, and chin, and awaken the muscles in our back side of the body. Hands close to the chest, tailbone out and back. Shoulder blades down the back ribs. On the exhale, shift those legs back. Hands by the chest. Inhale, easy cobra. Press to the tops of the feet, which are hip width apart. Knees off the ground. And all we're doing is we press to the tops of the feet. We're lightly awakening the lower back, preparing for our practice today. Lead with those hips. Come into down dog. Draw the right knee to the chest, to the nose. Place the right foot next to the right hand. Lower the back knee to the ground. And we'll do one or two dynamics. Beautiful. Let's keep the right hand on the hip and draw that left arm up and rotate that pinky inward. Feel that left hip release. Lower the right hand to the ground. Left hand on the hip, draw that right arm up or to the ground and feel that release almost of the outer right hip a bit. Gently release, frame the foot, runner's pose, back leg is straight, firm that right hip. Step that back foot forward, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. It's okay to slightly bend the knees and widen the feet if we're struggling with the forward fold or hands to the blocks. We're gonna come into a lateral forward fold. If you wanna take a block here to help, we're gonna take the hands outside of the left foot and we're gonna feel that release of the right side of the hip all the way down to the right leg. IT bound a little bit, iliotibial band. Breathe into this lateral flexion. Walk the hands back to the middle. Now over to the right. Breathe into that left hip, that left release, lateral flexion. Walk the hands to the middle. Forward fold. Gently bend the knees. Swan dive up. Open the chest. Open the heart. Exhale, heart centered. Beautiful. I'm gonna adjust my microphone here. Inhale. Draw those arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Energy out the fingertips. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway lift. 
framing the feet, we're gonna step that left leg back this time. Lower the left knee to the ground and let's come with the hands heart centered. As we sink now a little bit lower in beautiful Anjanyasana. Coming into a little prayer twist, extending the arms to the center here and extend, so right outside here towards the left and extend, reach those arms towards both walls, but draw the shoulders away from the ears. So beautiful hip stretch, but also with the dimension of a spinal twist. Inhale, exhale through the nose. Hands come together, heart center, come forward. And now adjust to the right, so we're rotating internally a little bit as we extend those arms wall to wall. Hands come heart center. Frame the foot, connect, runner's pose. And let's, let's sweep that right leg high. Auto mocha, one leg and down dog. Rotate the toes of that extended leg inward a bit. Lower into Phalakasana here. Dome the upper back just a bit, but engage the shoulders. Like again, belly button to the spine. Press into the ground, engage the shoulders, and engage those quadriceps, hips, I mean, heels over the balls of the feet. Connect to the entire body. Gently lower, knees, chest, and chin all at the ground at the same time. Draw the shoulder blades down the back ribs, tailbone out and back. And on the exhale, send those legs back, feet hip width apart, press into the ground, shoulders down the back. As we press to the tops of the feet, we're just awakening the lower back. On the exhale, lead with those hips. Come into down dog, Adho Mukha. Feet are hip width apart, press through those palms evenly. Tailbone back and down, pubis bone back and up. Draw the left knee to the chest to the nose, place the left foot next to the left hand, lower the right knee to the ground, hands come heart centered, sink lower. Adjusting to the right, extending those arms out from the center of the chest, breathe into that right hip, but as well as that beautiful spinal twist. Hands come heart centered, sink lower. Adjusting to the left, extending those arms from the center of the chest. Spinal twist. Hands come heart center. Framing the foot. Runner's pose, step forward, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, forward fold. Let's take the tops of the hands down and just awaken those wrists, the tops of the hands down fingertips towards us and just kind of rock forward and back. Fingers now come towards one another and let's rock side to side. Fingers move away from one another and rock side to side.
Gently bend the knees, swan dive up. Open the chest, open the heart. Exhale, heart centered. As we set our intention for our practice, again, our emphasis is going to be on balance. But I wanted to share with you guys something I kind of read about, that yoga is often a mirror to look at ourselves from within. So as we practice today, the postures and the breath, they kind of speak to us. Sometimes it helps us solve problems. It helps us realize some self-awareness and how to treat ourselves and how to treat others. It's a tool, it's a, it's a mirror to look at ourselves from within. As we close our eyes and rest, let's re lower the head to the fingertips. Let's take a moment to set your own personal practice, your own personal intention, I should say, for our practice today. Maybe there's a friend. Maybe there's an area in your life that you want to just let go. Breathe into. Develop self-awareness. Gently look up. Beautiful. Cleansing breath together. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Feet are together. We're at the center of the mat facing one another. We'll add a little hop here as we come into our prasarita stance, about one leg length. Rotate those big toes in. Beautiful. Press outer edges of the feet. Connecting as we clasp those hands behind, we're going to open the chest, open the heart, draw the shoulder blades towards one another. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, come forward. Breathe into those hamstrings, breathe into those groins, and think about getting the hands close to the ground as we continue to Open the shoulders, breathing into those hamstrings and inner groins. Beautiful Prasarita Paratasana, wide leg and forward fold. We'll continue with some more breath cycles as we inhale and exhale through the nose. Inhale, let's belly button comes to the spine, back is flat, and rise. Adjusting your left foot here as I mirror you. Your left foot is going to be pointed 90 degrees here. The back foot rotates in about 15 degrees. You're going to feel that left sitting bone kind of come back and in, so it's not flailing out to the side as we come into triangle. Utita Trikonasana. If any of you want to use a block, you can place it outside of your foot or simply stop by the shin as we breathe into this posture. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, reach towards the wall, hand to the shin as we come into the pose, shoulders stacked over one another, and we breathe into the back hip. Press outer edge of the back foot and ground down. Some of you may be able to come a little bit lower. Fingertips to the ceiling. If your neck bothers you, you can gaze straight ahead or at the ground. If not, gaze up and continue. I want you to draw the bottom left ribs forward. Several more breaths. Inhale, rise. Left hand to the ceiling, left hip up. Gently release. Cleansing breath. Inhale. Exhale. 
adjust that right foot, turn that back foot in, front foot 90 degrees, beautiful, inhale lengthen, exhale reach towards that wall, beautiful, and then hand to the shin, keep the body in one plane, shoulder over one another. Eventually, some of you may be able to come a little bit lower. Again, if you can, gaze up at the hand. Draw the left top ribs back, bottom ribs forward. Continue to breathe into that back hip. Inhale, root and rise. Draw that right hand up, right hip up. Opening that side body, gently release. Face forward. Heel, toe it in, beautiful. Let's take the block out on this one. This is, you can do two, two things. You can utilize a block. It's a little more challenging. If you're nervous about u utilizing the block, you can do it without the block, right? If you want to challenge yourself, you can utilize the block. We're going to come into tree, into balancing half moon, Ardha Chandrasana here. And this is, a cha this is definitely a challenge here. So with the block, to make it a little more challenging, cultivating padabanda, grounding into the ground, or you can do it without the block, you choose, okay? So we're gonna start with the right foot. And I have my toes off the edge of the right foot, grounding into the ground as we explore tree. You can either keep the foot lower, or we can work on the foot a little bit higher in a Virkshasana tree. And we're finding the balance of the inner thigh and outer thigh, drawing that right femur head in. We can bring the hands heart centered, we can stay here. Continue to abduct that bent leg. Rotate it to the side, level the pelvis. Draw that right femur head in. Or we can draw those arms up in Virkshasana. Keep your drishti, keep your gaze. Transitioning as we hover into balancing half moon. So we're gonna hover to the ground, a few inches off the ground, extending that back leg, externally rotating it, Finding our balance, hovering, hovering, near the ground, back hip rotating up, gently rise, finding the balance, gently releasing, cleansing breath, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. You can feel, I could feel my calf burning on that tree on that side. You're not alone. This is a big aspect of cultivating balance. Rooting now through the left foot, we're gonna draw that right leg either on, out on the, uh, you know, like a little kickstand lower, or we're gonna gather it and place it a little bit higher on the inner thigh. As I push my foot into the inner thigh, my, my inner thigh pushes out. My left femur head comes in. I abduct that bent leg, level my pelvis. I gaze forward. I find my drishti. Varshashana tree, rooting into the ground. Maybe I draw my arms up, cultivating balance. I'm going to explore balancing into Ardha Chandrasana. The left leg is just slightly, slightly bent 
as my left hand hovers towards the ground, my right leg is about hip level and it rotates open externally as I work on my balance. mindfully transition beautiful cleansing breath inhale through the nose exhale through the mouth so proud of you guys that is not easy we're going to continue to cultivate our balance here we're going to continue to take the postures like a mirror and look within Rooting to the four corners of the feet. Inhale, draw those arms up. If we can't draw those palms together, I like to take my thumb and index together here. My head in line, and I almost want to come into a little bit of a back bend here. Opening my chest, opening my heart. Inhale, rise. Exhale, come into forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Framing the feet. We're going to walk back into down dog. Beautiful down dog. Press of those palms. Length in the spine. Tailbone back and down. Pubis bone back and up. On the inhale, we're going to draw that left leg up, one-legged down dog. Exhale, draw the left knee to the chest, to the nose. Place the left foot next to the left hand. Come into runner's pose. Beautiful. And from here, we're going to transition into Ashtachandrasana crescent moon. Beautiful crescent moon. Strengthening both legs, finding your drishti, finding your gaze. Front knee tracks over the toes. Back hip rotates inward just a bit. Adding an open arm twist, we're going to open the arms, twisting to the left. Beautiful. Beautiful. And if you can make it more challenging, Gaze at that back hand. Transitioning to Vasitasana, taking the right hand to the ground, pressing through the heel of the hand, shoulder stacked over the heel of the hand. I want you to press outer edge of the right foot. Some of us can keep like a kickstand, so I almost roll outer edge of the left foot here. But if you can, making it more challenging, you're going to stack the feet together, continue to press outer edge of the right foot. And I want you to abduct and lift that right hip. So this is true balance, strengthening the shoulders, the hips, the obliques. Stay here several breaths. Gently release, transition back to plank. Core awakening here. Come into down dog. Tailbone back and down, pubis bone back and up. Lifting that right leg up to hip level. one-legged down dog on the exhale draw the right knee to the chest to the nose place the right foot next to the right hand come into crescent come into uh, runner's pose and then transition to beautiful crescent moon find the balance of the front leg and the back leg Come onto the pinky toe a tiny bit more of the back leg and rotate it inward just a bit. Front leg parallel to the ground. Active, strong front leg, back leg. Transition to an open arm twist. Open those arms. 
and twist to the right. If you can make it a little more challenging, you can gaze at that back hand. Balance equals strength. Drop that left hand to the ground inside of that right foot. Shoulder over the heel of the hand. Continue now to press outer edge of the left foot. Maybe press outer edge of the right foot. We can do a kickstand approach, which is easier for Vasitasana. Or eventually, we stack both feet, flex the left foot, beautiful strong left shoulder, lift that left hip up. Gently lower. Come into Phalakasana here. Into plank. Belly button to the spine. Connect. Exhale, lead with the hips. Come into down dog. And down dog, let's widen those heels a little bit to outer edges of the, of the mat almost. And feel those inner thighs, so we're exaggerating it. Feel those inner thighs spiral back. Still take the tailbone back and down. Pubis bone back and up and stay here several breath cycles, inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Walk the hands and the feet towards one another. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold if we can. Deep in the forward fold, I like to bring my sternum and chest close to my shins. And let's widen the feet on our forward fold here. Widen it a bit. Let's bend the right knee and take the right hand right in the middle, kind of under the face here. And let's draw that left arm up so we come into a little forward fold with a spinal twist here. Shoulders are stacked one over one another, left hand to the ceiling. Just another example of a forward fold with the element of the spinal twist. Gently release. This time bend the left leg and draw that left hand kind of under the face and reach that right arm up. Gently release. Come back to forward fold. Draw those arms up, belly button to the spine, back is flat. Inhale, root and rise. Cleansing breath, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Let's take the block out. Some of you may use the block. I'll just use it as a prop here. We're gonna start with the right leg out in front. It's a few inches shorter than a full leg length, just a few inches shorter. So adjust yourself. Is my right heel in line with the back arch or my back heel? And I want you to take, so adjust yourself with that. Heel to arch, heel to heel. Take the hips. I want you to be able to face them forward as we really ground down and rotate this back leg internally a bit. Parsvottanasana pyramid pose. One aspect is to take the arms into a reverse prayer, which is very good for the upper shoulders that tend to kind of rotate forward. This is a challenge for me. If you cannot touch your hands in a reverse prayer here, then you can simply clasp those elbows, okay? It's a beautiful shoulder stretch, so either reverse prayer or clasp those elbows. Front foot pointed straight ahead, both hips pointed forward, back foot rotate 45 to 60 degrees. Press outer edge of the back foot. Inhale, lengthen, open the chest. Exhale, 
come forward. Beautiful. Continue to come forward. Pubis bone back and up. Sternum and chest is going towards the toes. Right hip back, left hip forward. We can release the hands there. Maybe come to the block and kind of adjust those hips a bit or the ground. Front hip back, back hip forward. And for some of you, you may come a little bit lower into this pose here, Parzo Tanasana. Continue though to come more forward more on that right foot, almost like a gas pedal, a little bit more as we level the pelvis. Continue to bring the sternum and chest, nose to the shin. Stay here several breath cycles. Hands out in front, belly button to the spine. Inhale, root and rise. Cleansing breath. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. You can never underestimate the power of these standing postures and how good they are for you. Never skip over them. They're just so powerful. Left leg out in front. A few inches shorter than a full leg length. Maybe adjust the block. Heel to he heel or heel to arch, hips facing forward. You then can clasp those elbows or come into the reverse prayer. Fingertips coming up the spine, the reverse prayer here. Draw the shoulders down the towards each other, down the back. Inhale, create length. Exhale, come forward. Front hip back, back hip forward. Maybe hands to the block, adjust yourself, almost come more to the left midfoot. Right hip forward, beautiful. Hands to the ground. If we can, go a little bit farther. Come to that forward on that left foot, almost like a gas pedal. Left hip back, back hip forward. Level that pelvis. Continue to draw the sternum and chest close to the shin, but ground through that back foot. Draw the arms forward, belly button to the spine, back flat, root and rise. Cleansing breath, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Still taking care of us. This is a beautiful sequence. A lot of balance, a lot of strength. Pot a bond in the feet, awaken those arches. Inhale, draw those arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Releve up on the balls of the feet. So the ankles and the knees and the shins, let's try to get those together here. On the exhale, we're going to keep the ankles, knees, and shins together. Heels are lifted. As we lower the heels, the hips towards the heels, in a form of malasana. So my hands come behind my feet. I'm trying to rest my head almost towards the knees, and I'm connecting. I'm connecting to my pelvic floor, my mula bandha. I'm connecting to all my lower leg muscles, and I'm going to connect to my breath, to the posture, like a mirror looking within, self-awareness. Gently release, lower the heels to the ground. Beautiful. Coming to Dandasana, rooting through the sitting bones, drawing length even while we sit here. 
We're going to transition into an inclined plank or tabletop, reverse tabletop. And this is beautiful for strengthening the wrists, the shoulders, the hips, but as well as stretching the chest, the shoulders again, and even the feet. Strengthening and stretching. Walk those hands back about six inches. Draw the shoulder blades towards one another. Inhale, we're going to create length. We're going to draw the feet about hip width apart, kind of towards the buttocks here. And we're going to press up into reverse tabletop. And this is where the shoulders come towards one another, one another sacrum towards the knees, broaden the collarbones. Beautiful. Relax the head. Many of you will simply stay here, broadening the shoulders here. And some of you will extend those legs, press through those inner arches, Lift those hips. Gently release. Draw the heels, the feet together a little bit closer. Heels off the ground. Root and rise. Cleansing breath. Inhale. Exhale. Coming onto the block as we touch on balance again. In Virabhasana 3, Warrior 3. We're going to start with the block out in front. We're going to root through the four corners of the block with the right foot. So the toes off the edge. This is a challenging we can do it. You don't need the block. You can add the block. It's kind of fun to add the block. Rooting through the four corners of the right leg, we're going to draw that left leg up. And we're going to extend that left leg back about hip level. We can keep airplane arms here for the, begin for the beginners. Keep that right knee pointed straight ahead. Eventually, we may extend those arms out. Rotate the, that back leg toes to the ground. Connect. Connect with the entire body. Lengthen through the torso. Gently release. Lots of hip stability in that pose. It's good to really connect, isolate, and come into balance. Like we're doing right now, we're giving honor to the pose almost. Rooting through the four corners of the left foot as we prepare for warrior three, Virabhasana three, the other side. Draw that right knee up. Extend that back leg about hip level. Rotate the toes to the ground. Eventually, maybe we take the hands, we come forward, we lengthen from the torso. We find the balance, level the hips, level the pelvis. Gently rise. Cleansing breath. So proud of you guys. We're going to connect to our entire body here. We're going to take it to the ground now. I'm very, very proud of you guys. And we're going to start with Gomukhasana. We might take a block. We might take a strap. Gomukhasana is a beautiful hip and shoulder opener. We're going to start. We're going to lift those legs up. And I want you to cross. You're going to cross the left leg over the right. And I know that's a little challenging for some of us. We're going to do the best that we can. Left leg over the right. And for some of you, you might be out a little bit. Okay? You might modify it a little bit. But we're going to cross the left leg over the right. Often we come forward and back. And some of you may even work on sitting on a block and just experience this opening of the hips here in Gomukhasana. Beautiful. And this is where we're going to take now the opposite shoulder. So we might take the strap, and I like to take my thumb and the D-rings if you have it. But if not, just lift the strap up. So we take that right arm up. And we draw the hand down the back 
externally rotate that top arm. Now the bottom left arm is going to come into a complete different way. Internally rotate, the thumb rotates in. We either clasp the strap or the fingertips. Beautiful. And we take the head, I mean the, yeah, the head and press it into the back of the top arm. As we possibly close our eyes and breathe into the release of the outer hips and the shoulders. Gently release. Maybe we take the block out in front. As we come forward and relax and br continue to breathe into that release of the outer hips. Inhale, exhale through the nose. Often the exhale is going to be a little bit longer in a posture like this on the ground. Just let it go. Surrender to the posture. Gently release. We're going to cross the right leg over the left. We're going to come forward and back. Forward and back. And maybe either sit on top of a block if that helps. Okay, you may adjust yourself as you come into that. Do the best that we can. And I still awaken my arches of my feet here. Beautiful. And now we're going to take the opposite arm this time. So we're going to take the left arm. And we're going to draw that left arm up and guide it down the back. Fingertips coming down the spine. And we're going to take the right arm and the thumb comes up. Beautiful. And we either clasp a hold of the strap or we walk those hands up. This is a difficult one to internally rotate the bottom arm. Good. And either clasp a hold of the strap or the fingertips. So now take the head and press it into the back of that top arm. Draw length in the spine. I know this is beautiful for the shoulders, for the hips. It's okay to close those eyes and stay here several breaths. Gently release. Take the block out in front. Breathe into this. Let's inhale, lengthen. Exhale, come forward. Breathe into that release of the outer hips. Let everything go.
gently release, come up, rise. My little sister and I practiced yoga together this weekend. And we discussed the balance. We're going to come out of this pose. We discussed the importance as we come into a little straddle here. We discuss the importance of this pose. So adjust yourself, come into a little bit of a straddle. We discuss the importance of coming into a version of the middle splits the best that we can. So for this, I like to come into the, I, I'm gonna widen it just a bit, bring my hips forward, wherever we are, and we're gonna hold this for a while. But I like to kind of press outer edges of my feet come forward and back and so I explore a little dynamic exploration but it takes the femur heads it rotates them inward and it really stretches here beautiful for mobility here press outer edges of the feet come forward smile good keep working on it keep working yoga's like a mirror keep working guys one more time, let's come in and hold several breaths. Press outer edges of the feet. Come forward. Believe what we're doing. Gently release. Really is a beautiful posture, beautiful. Come out of the pose, draw both legs. Do a little dynamic down dog exploration here. So I'm going to come back to a tabletop. Lead with those hips. Dynamic down dog. Come into a forward plank. Beautiful. Gently lower onto the stomachs here. The feet are going to be, we're going to relax the forehead onto the ground. The feet are hip width apart. Just relax up our breasts here. We're going to come into a spinal extension. We're going to draw the hands back a couple inches, maybe below a bra strap. The feet are hip width apart. We're going to press to the tops of the feet. Knees are off the ground. We're going to first lift the chest without the hands to the ground. Lift the chest. Press to the tops of the feet. Lift the chest. Hands now to the ground. Draw those elbows towards, towards the sides of the body here. We're going to inhale, create length in extended cobra. Inhale, rise. Inhale, rise. Pubis bone to the ground. Pubis bone stays to the ground. Knee, press to the tops of the feet, inner thighs, spiral back. Spinal extension. Elbows close to the side. Stay here, several breaths. Gently release. We're going to do this one more time. Beautiful Cobra. Let's relax several breaths. Hands an inch or two below the bra strap, off the ground, press to the tops of the feet, chest off the ground. Inhale, rise. Inhale, rise. Inhale, rise. Inhale, rise. Gently release. Rest the forehead to the ground. We're going to counter this pose with a little eventually spinal twist. It's going to be a half frog, half twist. So I draw my left leg up, my bent leg, a 90 degree. My knee is in line with those hips, and my foot is in line, slightly flexed with that knee. 
Beautiful. I'm going to kind of rest my forehead to the ground here. I'm going to take that right arm and thread the needle here. So now I'm coming into a little shoulder release. And I'm going to rest my head probably kind of on the, the back of my left hand here. But I'm really threading that right shoulder to the ground. And just relaxing here. Pelvis to the ground. Releasing the shoulder and the hip just a bit. This is an easy, it's a light stretch. Now we're going to really come into the stretch. We're going to take the left arm behind and the right hand is going to come onto the left knee as the left arm reaches in a spinal twist left shoulder to the ground gaze over the left shoulder Gently release. We're going to draw that right leg to hip level. And we're going to have that right foot in line with the right knee. And trying to get the pubis bone, kind of the hip to the ground, pelvis to the ground, good. Half frog, half twist. We're going to start off releasing the shoulders. We're going to thread the left arm through, resting the left shoulder to the ground and kind of resting the head onto the hand here. Beautiful. Release. And just get the, the pelvis to the ground. Little hip opener, little shoulder opener as we t and rest that left shoulder to the ground and threading the needle. Coming into a spinal twist, we're going to open that right arm to the ground, hand onto the left knee, right shoulder to the ground. Gently release. Coming forward here. Relaxing. We're going to uh, come into one last wide-legged child's pose. Big toes touching. Widen the knees. Send those hips back. Walk those palms forward that are about shoulder width apart. And rest the forehead to the ground, sending those hips back. Create length in the spine as we press the palms into the ground, 
drawing length in the spine. Continue to inhale, exhale through the nose. Longer exhales here. Again, yoga is often a mirror that allows us to look within. Gently come out of that. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to take our Shavasana on our stomachs, a little prone Shavasana. So often when we do that, we relax the arms, we relax, relax the legs. Often we kind of just have the arms out in front. Maybe we take this hand, stack them over one another. And maybe just rest the forehead to the tops of the hands or to the ground. And just let it go in a prone Shavasana grounding. Looking within. Letting everything go and surrendering to the Shavasana as we really relax.
gently come out of the Shavasana. Fold hands, heart centered. Lowering the head to the finger fingertips. Reflecting back on your own intention of your practice. Gently look up. Namaste. Have a wonderful day, guys. Namaste. Beautiful practice today. <laughs>